Rebuilding a model steam plant, part 29. Fitting the original hand pump to the baseboard using PM Research piping and elbows. Looking at the dynamo wiring, then test fitting the lamps and showing why an elastic band drive belt does not work. This is one of about three PM Research water pumps that I have. I fitted it to the baseboard, but to be honest it wasn't a very good fit. I'm going to start this episode by removing this pump, because I've found the original pump that was fitted to this baseboard, which in theory should be a perfect fit. And before anybody comments, yes I know the screwdriver's too small, I just couldn't find the next size up. Here is the original pump, now fitted to the plant, and I had to fit it this way round, that's how it was designed to fit. When I fitted the other hand pump, I did notice that the holes did not line up with the holes in the baseboard. These holes line up perfectly, providing that the pump is fitted this way round. Thinking about the job, this is a better way of fitting the pump, because the handle faces the water tower and it's not anywhere near a hot steam engine when you're operating the pump by hand. This is a PM Research pump and I'm going to use PM Research fittings, but not this particular one, it's far too big. The pump itself is threaded 5 sixteenths on both the inlet and outlet. And when I use a 5 sixteenths elbow and another piece of 5 sixteenths pipe, the whole thing looks completely overscale and very ugly. Instead, I'm fitting this adapter. This is 5 sixteenths to quarter by 40. And now I can screw a PM Research elbow onto the end of the adapter. This is a pressure connection on the outlet from the pump to the boiler. And this assembly is just a dummy run to see if everything fits. When I do it for real, I will be using some locked out 542 thread sealant because I cannot have any leaks in this area. I know that a lot of people do not like adjustable spanners and neither do I, except for this type, Barco. I have three of these spanners and I use them very frequently for quite a lot of jobs. In fact, one of these small Barco spanners I have is 45 years old. And oddly enough, the spanner that's in the best condition is the oldest one. This particular Barco adjustable spanner is one of the newer ones and there are some marks around the edges of the jaws. Yet another example of the price of progress, I suppose. This was a fiddly job, and when I think about it, I have to do it all again to put the sealant in place. I always try to do jobs properly. The 542 thread sealant will be applied once I make sure that the parts fit perfectly. I don't use these type of pipes on everything. I like the elbows, but I do find the thick brass piping only looks good in certain applications, on the exhaust outlets in the smaller range of Stuart Models engines. For the steam inlet piping, I will be using 532nd or 4mm diameter pipe, and this will be copper that I can bend to where I need it to be. I think that the PM Research fittings look quite good on this water pump. Here's the overhead view. I need to put another elbow on the end and then an adapter to make it so I can fit a standard piece of 532nd pipe which will go through underneath the boiler right next to the burner, coming out at the other end and then going up to the check valve. I'd like to show you this. I'm not going to use it in the plant, it's just something I found in a box. It's horrible. For this classy looking steam plant, I think it needs a matching classy looking steam turret, not this thing. There is a hole conveniently drilled in the baseboard just where I need it to be to fit a new ornamental steam turret. It's time to look at the dynamo wiring. I twisted together two pieces of wire quite a while ago. I threaded this long piece of wire through the hole in the dynamo mounting and then pulled it through from underneath. This by the way is just a mock-up to test the functionality of the dynamo. When I do the job for real, the ends of the wires, as you see here, will be tinned using soft solder. At the dynamo end of things, these wires go through holes in the terminals, and then on each terminal there is a bolt that holds the wire in place, but unfortunately on this dynamo one of the bolts has gone. But all is not lost, I'm going to use some 10BA bolts that I have that fit perfectly in the terminals. While on the subject of electrical wire termination, 
I bought these a few weeks back, and they're really clever. In my hand is one of these such devices. All you do is press the button on top, insert the wire and let go. And the wire, or wires in this case, are very firmly held in place. What I'm doing is connecting the two onboard lamps from the plant to the dynamo's output. Once I'd done that, I thought it was a good idea to attach the compressed air line to the engine, but now the dynamo is under load because it's connected to these two light bulbs, the rubber band just flew off. Plan B is to make a leather belt, which I was going to do anyway. Rubber bands are very useful for checking the alignment of pulleys, but that's about it. They're no good from a practical point of view. The load put across the terminals of the dynamo by the addition of these two lights makes the dynamo more difficult to turn, and so the elastic band flies off. I have a feeling that these bulbs are probably too high a wattage. I'll see how it goes when I make a proper leather drive belt. I could always get some LED bulbs, but that is the last resort. A while back, in a bunch of things that I bought, I picked up a diorama, which is made up of a combination of various types of LEDs. I want the new owner of this steam plant to be able to plug this into the steam plant, as well as the onboard lights. But before I can do that, I need to modify the diorama. There's a fancy panel with switches on it, which is not good at all. That has to go, and for the moment, so do I. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.